Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz. I am Beauty and Bounty. Today's video is going to be just a quick get ready with me. Um, I don't have anything really epic going on today, uh, but I did pull out a bunch of cream products for my base. We're going to do something full coverage because I have a lot of uh, pigmentation left over from a breakout. Before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe. You can just click this little button right inside the video and it won't navigate you away from whatever page you're watching it on. Um, that way you won't miss any of my future videos and it will help other people find me. I think that's it. Here we go. Boom. Today I'm going really full coverage. I have a lot of pigmentation left over from um, a sugar and hormone induced breakout. Um, so I'm going to take my L'Oreal Infallible Pore Glow. So I'm in the color 202 and mix in a little Dermacol 208. This is a science experiment. Never done this before. So it might work out really well. Ooh, or it might be a disaster. We'll see. I keep trying to get Dermacol to work for me, but I have yet to succeed, man. Um, I feel like every time, oh, I just, I straight up cannot use it on its own at all. Um, but I've tried like spot concealing with it and I've tried mixing it in with a few different foundations. Um, and I just feel like it kind of never blends out fully. I don't know. It's just, it looks really heavy. That's it. It looks really heavy on the skin no matter how I use it. But um, the L'Oreal Pro Glow is really light and really weightless on the skin. It's almost invisible. I, it is very glowy. So if that's not you, you won't like it. But um, as far as coverage goes, it's fantastic. Normally I would apply my Pro Glow with a brush just to get the best coverage out of it. But um, because I'm a little nervous about the Dermacol. I'm going to stick with the beauty blender and go gently. Um, okay, so that is one layer. I'm going to mix up a little bit more because it is kind of a medium coverage with the sponge. And I'm not going to go all over my face, I'm just going to hit, you know, the nice hormonal beard. And then these guys, I don't know what those guys were doing. They were out to party. And with the brush, I find if I press it in, rather than blending and moving in circles, but stippling motion, you don't lose the coverage. See, this is the thing I run in with Dermacol. It looks like I have spackle on this side of my face. Let's see if I can blend up the edges a little bit. I'm going to be using the Desert Dust Palette. I love this so much. It is just beautiful. Purples and oranges are right up my alley. They're my favorite thing. Um, so I'm going to start off with Desert Sand and just set my whole lid. I'm using a Sigma E40. Um, next I'm going to take a combination of Musk and Eden on a Smith 232, it's just a fluffy blender, and run that um, through my crease. I'm going to actually kind of place it first on the outer half of my eye and then swizzle it up. Next, I think I'm gonna take, I wanna use Twilight today. So I think I'm gonna take um, a combination of Amethyst and Amber and do the same thing, kind of put it, um, the outer half of my eye and in the crease, but lower and tighter. Okay, so amethyst and amber, pressing it on the outer 
probably third at this point, the first one went, and then working it through the crease. Lexi 231. I think I'm going to take my e.l.f. detailed crease brush and a little bit of saffron, a little bit of food. Because, I don't know, why can't I just use one color? Because oud is too cool and saffron's too red, so if I mix them together, I get a deep, warm brown. And I'm just gonna work this in the little uh, outer corner. I really like this, the shape of this e.l.f. detailed crease brush, and but like the bristles on it are garbage. They're so stiff. They're stiff and they're pokey and they're like, it doesn't actually blend too well, but I don't have anything that compares to it. I don't have anything that is, it's like a teeny tiny E40. It's small and it's domed. It's not tapered. So that's why I keep using it because I don't have anything that is shaped like that. If you know something that's shaped like that, let me know in the comments uh, because I'd appreciate that. I think before I go on to in with Twilight, I want to um, do my under eyes because I vaguely remember there being a lot of fallout with it. I don't use Twilight a lot because I like Retrograde so much. Retrograde has a purple red shift. It's fantastic. And Twilight um, has like a, like a lavender to purple shift. I have the um, ColourPop concealer in 18C1. And I have Kat Von D's concealer in L5 Natural, and I'm going to mix them. I'm gonna put Kat Von D's kind of like right in the deepest depths of my eye caves. And then this one, I'm just gonna use on the rest of them. This is only my second time using the ColourPop one, and I think the first time I went a little too hard with it because I didn't like the way it looked, and a lot of people seem to love it, um, but I found that it was just way too much. So we'll just do little dots instead of a lot of epic. We'll use less is more. Is it ever really? I recently bought, when I bought the uh, Kat Von D concealer, um, I also bought her petal setting powder. So it's, um, she has brightening, they're brightening powders. She has brightening powders in different tones for different um, skin tones. And so petal is like this really light pastel pink one for fair skin. Um, I can't remember, I saw, I saw talk about it but they were I thought they were as fair as I was but I've been trying to use it for like two weeks now and I find that um, it really just it darkens my concealer it's not cute so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that and I've tried using it with like concealers that are too light for me but it's just it's way too pigmented for someone as fair as I am apparently Really, I just want to get a lot of powder down here so that if I have a crap ton of fallout from Twilight, it'll be fine. We'll be fine. And then I'm going to go, do I want to use cashmere instead after all that? Here are my options. Stop focusing on me. Cashmere, it's like a cool taupe and twilight. You know, twilight. And I didn't have any fallout because I barely used any, so let's get this off. 
because I have the hardest time getting the coverage I want on my under eyes without them looking dry because I am very dry. Um, man, I don't know about this combination on the foundation because I think it just looks like spackle. Like it just, like there's a layer on the skin and you can tell that's what you get for doing science experiments. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, my Laura Mercier setting powder and no I'm not, I have a shit ton of cream products to use. So I'm not gonna put powder on my face. Um, this is the Chanel Tan de Chanel Universal Bronze. Just gonna put this on my cheeks and on my forehead to warm up the face. Um, I am using for blush Becca Beach Tint in Fig. I'm just dotting it on. And then going in with a Real Techniques stipple blush and blending it out. Okay, so my camera got a little hot and bothered, and while it was sitting in the corner, cooling off, and taking a time out, I put a couple coats of mascara on. I used this Tarte one. It's the Tartist, whatever, Tartist mascara. Um, I did my brows with the NYX tinted brow gel in black. And then um, I filled in my little mole with uh, It Cosmetics Universal Brow Pencil and Taupe. And then I also did my underline, under eye. And I took, um, first I started with musk, and I put uh, musk just on the outer third, and then I just mixed together uh, amber and amber and amethyst and saffron like I just dipped into all of them and buffed it out blended it out um, next just gonna throw some highlighter on and I have a itty bitty sample of Tarte Pro Glow and Stunner and this has lasted me forever I think it was like a hundred uh, point perk on Sephora a while ago and I really like it it's good stuff Ooh. Man, I'm using all cream stuff I should have used. My new Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, bummer. Because that thing is beautiful. Oh well. I think I'll use this. Just a small fluffy brush. My E40. I don't want to go in with my beauty blender because I don't want to. I don't actually want to pull up any of the product. I want it all on my face. Oh, and my inner eyes. Oh, and while I was while I was off camera, I also took uh, desert sand and I also took desert sand and highlighted my brow bone. And I think that is it. Um, for lips, I'm using a Sarah Hap Lip Primer, Sarah Hap Plump and Pride, and ColourPop Liner in Contempo. And then, Cover Effects Illuminating Setting Spray. And that is the finished look. Let's shake up the hair. I'll just Hulk smash everything on my desk. Oh, hello. All right, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Liz. I am Beauty and Bounty. Please be sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. You can find me um, on my website, beautyandbountyblog.com. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Vero. Anyone over on Vero? I don't think so. Um, and Twitter. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.